Nestle's Ever Ready, the Instant Cocoa. Nestle's Quick for Great Chocolate Milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars. Now present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with fun story. Commander in chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have been taken back millions of years through time and forced out of Scarno's spaceship in a tropic jungle on the planet Earth. Take care of that car, kid, huh? You get stuck in that stuff, you don't have time getting in. Look, the rocket, what was that? That's what I think it is. We're in trouble. Hey, Commander, look. Coming out of the jungle. It's a monster. Tyrannosaurus. The biggest dinosaur that ever lived. It must be 50 feet high. Stand still, I think it makes sense. Look at those two. The top of the top in one bunch. It saw us half. Run! We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Monster from the Past. It's quicker than a jet flight. It's quicker than the speed of light. It's Nestle's Quick, the miracle product that mixes so quick it gives you chocolate milk in seconds. Fellas and girls, have you tried instant Nestle's Quick? Nothing was ever so speedy. Here's all you have to do to get perfect chocolate milk. First, pour out your big, cold, frosty glass of milk. Then add two teaspoons of Nestle's Quick. That's right, you pour the milk first, then you add Quick. Spoon it around once or twice, and there's your chocolate milk. Why, it practically makes itself. And wait till you taste that flavor. Quick is just like those great Nestle chocolate bars. Yes, sir, it's got that special Nestle's chocolate taste. That special Nestle's chocolate richness. That special Nestle's chocolate smoothness. Uh, it's a real soda fountain treat. Love your own home. You're going to love having wonderful Nestle's quick with meals and for snacks and before bedtime. And you can tell Mom that quick is good for you because it's fortified with vitamin D. And the more quick you drink, the more milk you drink. So she's sure to approve. Ask Mom to get that big brown and yellow can of Nestle's delicious, most chocolate, quickest treat in the universe. That's Q-U-I-K. Nestle's Quick. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Monster from the Past. Commander Corey is using every facility of the Space Patrol in his search for the elusive criminal Dr. Ryland Skarno. Ordinary methods of detection are proven futile because Skarno is able to escape capture by traveling through time where no one can follow him. At this moment, Skarno is in Chaplin City visiting an accomplice, Joseph Merck. Merck is examining some rough, uncut stones that Skarno is handed to him. I think Dr. Skarno perfect. Every bit as good as the last one. Actually, Skarno... Before I peddle any more of these diamonds, I want to know where you got them. Just in the case they're stolen. They aren't stolen. I found them on Earth in South Africa. That's a big country. Where in South Africa? In the Kimberley region. You, you discovered a new deal? No, no. I discovered an old one. I've been back in time. Back to the 19th century. Oh, then it's true. Cool. These rumors I've heard about your time, sir. Yes. I stole a star drive spaceship. A hyperspace computer is slightly out of adjustment. By accident, I discovered that the mechanism can be used to travel through time as well as through space. And wonderful the possibilities. Possibilities are right in front of you. That's done. You brought them into the 30th century? Exactly. Diamonds were discovered in South Africa in the year 1867. The hunter accidentally found several stones along the Iron River near Hickman. To get described the exact site in the tape. And you went back in time to that very site. I went back to 1866, one year old. Now, oh, listen, you don't have money in the hurry. I've got an idea that it'll bring us several thousand credits in a couple of days. Go ahead. I'm listening. Did you ever hear of the island of Mauritius? No. What about it? It's east of Africa, a few hundred miles off the coast of Madagascar. Oh, what's on this island? Diamond? Gold? No. Birds. Earth. With millions in diamonds, you talk about birds. Now, wait, wait. Hundreds of years ago, a strange and rare type of bird lived on this island. But it was slaughtered by the thousands and became extinct. No living bird of this species was ever seen after 1681. I'm not interested. I know. Do you realize how valuable one of these birds would be? 
if we could bring it alive into the 30th century, trying to get the foundation of the board structure. When? Immediately. I had connections with the leading Jews in Bird Bond. Remember, Stalin, a diamond requires time and craftsmanship to increase its value. The bird can be sold just as it is. Same thing there. Tell me about this island. Elsewhere, Buzz and Happy are on the planet Earth, where Buzz has been consulting with mathematicians and electronics experts on the problem of time travel. Between meetings, the commander and Happy are visiting the Washington Zoological Gardens at the invitation of the curator, Dr. Dawson. Well, what was it Dr. Dawson wanted to show? Some new exhibit that just came in. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but it seemed pretty exciting. Right now, I'm more interested in what those scientists are doing. Well, if they can only find a way to make a show of five times three time, we can capture Stalin. We've got the best brains in the solar system with them. So far, we are nowhere near a solution. Uh, so Stalin's hyperspace control is a freak effect, is that it? I don't know. We've still got to find out why, but it might happen to other star drive ships. Yeah. The ships could suddenly disappear into the past or into the future, and you never know what happened to them. Yeah. Well, maybe something happened to Stalin. Well, that could explain why we haven't had any reports on him for several days. I'm not so sure we haven't heard it. Stalin's best bet is to bring small items of great value from the past into the present. Oh, like the private treasure he brought back the first time. Yes. A dealer on Saturn received some diamonds from an amateur getting smith. He told the dealer he found the uncut stones on Venus in a hanging pit. He could have. I mean, there are diamonds on Venus. Yes, but so far, none of this particular type. They're similar to diamonds from some region of Earth, chiefly South Africa. However, this Joseph Merck could have been telling the truth. Joseph Merck? Oh, that's the man who sold the diamond. Yeah. Here comes Dr. Dawson. Sorry to keep you waiting, Commander. You've had plenty to keep us interested, Doctor. I'll say. You must have every bird in the universe in those cages. <laughs> no, not quite. Uh, but I'm going to show you gentlemen something that will more than make up for any emotion. You mean the new exhibit? Yes. Now, if you just come down to Pat for the next day, please. Sure. If anyone had told me a week ago that there was any such bird as this in existence, I would have laughed in the face. Hey, what kind of a bird is it? Oh, I want you to see it before I tell you. Frankly, I am more excited about this bird than I've been about anything in years. What do you think of it? It's so funny looking. Got a great big body, a little scrawny wings. Don't tell me it can fly. <laughs> no, it's too much. And it cannot walk very well either. I shouldn't think so with those short, stubby legs. Uh, I hate to get in the way of that big hooked beast. But... Uh, gentlemen, for more than a thousand years, the bird was believed to be extinct. The less reliable report on any living bird of this species dates back to 1681. Well, I give up, Dr. Dawson. What is it? That gentleman is a dodo. A dodo? I never heard of it. Well, uh, except in the expression, uh, uh, that is a dodo. <laughs> that is a, uh, the phrase refers to this very bird. In the 16th century, uh, there were plenty people on the islands of Mauritius, in the Indian Ocean. But in less than 200 years, they had all been killed or were killed in stocks. Amazing, Doctor. How did you get this one? Yeah, let me show you on the top of this one. Uh, on a what? On the top of this one. Let's put on her. We found it in the interior of Madagascar. As you may know, Madagascar is a few hundred miles from the river, the, the original Dodo Island. And for hundreds and hundreds of years, a few of these birds managed to survive in Madagascar. Very few. In fact, this Dodo may be one of the last two in existence. Uh, the ornithologist has the other one. I made the large ones to five seconds of life. Dr. Dawson, would you mind telling me the name of this ornithologist who discovered the Dodo? No, yeah, not at all. Uh, the man's name is Miller. Joseph Miller. Joseph Miller. What? Does he live in Saturn City? Oh, yes, yes. He's going to shoot the other Dodo to me as soon as I send him the name. Dr. Dawson, he's stolen off the day, so I'm sure I have a talk to him. Oh, please, Commander, I hope nothing will happen to accept the present arrangement. I simply must have him. Oh, don't worry about that. After I talk with Merck, you either get the Dodos for the agreed price, or you get them absolutely free. And in Saturn City, Joseph Merck goes about the exacting task of cutting and polishing the rough diamond. Scarno stands over him and takes him. Isn't there some way to speed that up, Merck? Uh, 
Make the same diamond you started on this morning. What's the matter? Why are you stopping? Stop. Shaping a diamond is a very delicate operation. I can't do it and answer your idiotic questions at the same time. I'm on edge, I guess. What about that zookeeper? Wasn't he supposed to contact you about the other day? Just be patient. Now that he has one of them, he'll just have to have the other one. I know, Dawson. What's that? Oh, the visitor is so pretty. Get those two out of sight. Take it easy. Just hold that slide right back into the wall. Watch. There you are. You'd better get in the back room, sir. All right. Get rid of them quickly, understand? I'd like to talk to you about your deal with Dr. Dawson. Uh, yeah? Involving a certain rare bird. Oh, very well, come on. Come on, Dr. Dawson. Forgive me if I don't understand why the space patrol is concerned about this. After all, there's no question of fraud. Dr. Dawson is convinced that the bird I left with him is a real dodo. Yes, I know. But as I understand it, you have another dodo here in Saturn. Okay? Yes. It's to be delivered to Dr. Dawson that he meets certain financial terms. Then you admit bringing a dodo from Earth to Saturn. When any form of wildlife is brought from one planet to another, it must pass through quarantine. No state court or north or in Saturn has any record of inspecting the building. You, know, you can't be serious. There's no danger of disease. I've brought dozens of birds from one planet to another, and not one has been a carrier of harmful bacteria. Yes, I know. That's true in 30th century birds, but it may not be true of birds from the 16th century. <laughs> Commander, from the way you talk, one would think you're suggesting that these two birds were actually alive in the 16th century. That's exactly what I am suggesting, Mr. Do you believe the bird is 1,400 years old? No, I believe he transplanted two birds in the 16th century into the present. It's serious. Such a thing is impossible. Not if you have a star drive spaceship that'll go back into the past. Mr. Murk, you recently sold some diamonds, I believe. I... Yes, yes, I did. Diamonds I found on Venus. Are you sure they didn't come from Earth? If you can travel in time, you can go back to the time and the place the diamonds are covered there. They got dodos swarm like pigeons in the sky. This is all ridiculous. I've committed no crime. Perhaps you know someone who has. Ryland Sparno, for instance. Ryland Sparno? I've never heard of it. What I just mean. You'll see how you react to the danger. Now, if you show me where that other dodo is, I'll put it in quarantine. Well, don't be necessary, please. Look out, the matter, it's Scarno. Now, then, boy, the first flight needs from either of you or no double. Scarno, it's me. It's calling out the whole setup. Not going to be in any good. Thanks to poor commander, I took you back into the past to get rid of you. It didn't work. Only because I made the mistake of returning to that same instant of time. This time, there'll be no mistake. <laughs> Going back into the past, Mert, and they'll never return. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, Captain Chiefbell, if you had three wishes, who would you wish for, huh? Well, Tony, um, let me see. I know what I'd wish for. You want to hear? Sure. I wish I owned a glass factory, too. Well, that's kind of strange. What's your next wish? I wish I owned all the cows in the world. Oh, now I'm beginning to get it. And your third wish would be? To have cans of Nestle's quick whenever I snap my fingers. That's certainly sensible, Tony. You know, in your factory, you'd always have nice big glasses. If you're cows, you'd get all the cold milk you'd need. And then you'd drop in your Nestle's quick and have a never-ending supply of the world's most sensational chocolate milk. Boy, I sure love Nestle's quick. It gives milk and chocolate bar flavor. So good, rich, and delicious. Golly, I can make my own glass of dick whenever I like. Because all I do is pour the glass of milk and then drop in two teaspoons of dick. Dick mix is instantly. In fact, Tony Nestle's quick practically makes itself. It's that fast and that simple. And quick is such a treat. It's like having a soda fountain right in your own home. And all it takes is a glass, some cold milk, and two spoonfuls of wonderful Nestle's quick. And see, Big Dick Boys, you tell your mom that quick makes milk taste so great, you'll be drinking lots more of it. And that's sure to please your tummy. Remember, you want Nestle's Quick in the big brown and yellow can. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Monster from the Past. 
Commander Corey learned that the hunter who captured two specimens of the supposedly extinct dodo is the same man who claimed to have found some valuable diamonds on Venus. Now, to Buzz, this coincidence suggested the work of Dr. Scarno and his ship and travels through time. While Buzz and Happy were questioning the amazingly lucky hunter, Dr. Scarno rendered them unconscious with a ray gun. At this moment, Buzz and Happy are captives aboard Scarno's ship somewhere in space. Seems to me we've been in start now an awfully long time, sir. Let's start figuring out what we do, huh? When Scarno took us off his ship, we'll be back in some past period of time, but no way to return. Well, then whatever we do, we've got to do it before the ship lands. Hold it, huh? Just relax, Corey. You forced me to use this ray gun again. It may be very bad for all of us. Something wrong? I'm not sure. You seem to be holding in star drive for an unusually long time. I want you to check the hyperspace computer. Suppose we don't. Suppose we like it in star drive. If you think this situation is giving you an advantage, you're mistaken for that. There is an error in the computer. Each second may be magnifying that error. That's too strong, man. It could become lost in a strange dimension for all we know. Well, there's your choice, Commander. Repair the computer and be sure of a chance of survival. Be stubborn and meet an unknown fate in the nothingness of hyperspace. All right. Let me look at the computer. While Happy, Scarno, and Joseph Merck look on, Buzz checks the baffling maze of circuits in the hyperspace computer. Carefully, he makes delicate adjustments of the complex instruments, which then replaces the panel. Is it, is it fixed? I don't know. Remember, this particular computer was out of alignment to begin with. That's why you're able to travel in time. What did you do to it? One group of circuits was working against another. I brought them into balance. Yes, but I don't notice any change. Listen, what's happening? Hey, we're coming out of Star Drive. Look through the ports. We're in regular space. He's right. The, the blackness is gone. There are stars out there. Look, keep an eye on Corey and the cadet. We've got to find out where we are. I think we're in the solar system. Conservations look familiar, and that planet over there could be Jupiter. Well, if that's Jupiter, then that other planet in the starboard viewport must be Earth. Jim, I had the computer set correctly after all. All Corey did was bring us out of Star Drive. Yeah? But you still don't know what century you're in. Yes, it matters. Scarno, let's land on Earth and put Corey and the cadet out of the ship. We don't care what century they're stranded in. You'd better care if you want to return to the 30th century. He's right, man. We've got to know our exact space time coordinates. The planet we're headed for. It can't be Earth. Right. The shape of the continents are all different. That isn't Earth, Scarno. Corey, what's happened? The Earth can change quite a bit over several million years. A million, did you say? Scarno's time machine evidently stripped its gears. It didn't skip back a few centuries. It bounded back by eras and methods. How far back? Tell me, Corey. How far? I've been checking over the computer. I say around 140 million years. Give or take 10 million. Within 40 million years. That would be the Mesozoic era. And probably the Jurassic period. What I can see in the view scope is a lot of vegetation in the time. Oh, it's giant ferns and possible plants for the most part. You see, age of reptiles, lizards of all types, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs? You mean those prehistoric monsters? They're not all monsters, but that is real when they're no bigger than common house cats. <laughs> Corey, I'm going to give you a very great honor. You and the cadet are going to be the first human beings to see living dinosaurs. You're going to put us out of the ship this far back in the past? Why not? With your superior intelligence, you should be able to survive. <laughs> a few hours later, Scarno sets the spaceship down on a small area of high ground in the midst of a steaming marsh. Around the ship is a jungle of giant ferns and conifers. Holding ray guns, Scarno and Merck forced Buzz and Happy toward the open hatch. This is where we say goodbye, Corey. Go on, get out of the ship. We're going to have to answer for this someday, Scarno. I'll take that chance. I'll go on, get out. Wait. Scarno, look. See whatever they are? It's a big lizard. A baby dinosaur. Scarno, if you can take that with us to the 30th century, it'd be worth a fortune. Let's capture it. Capture that thing. Are you crazy, man? We can stun it with a ray gun. At the most, it weighs 200 pounds. We can make Corey and the cadet carry it into the ship. I don't like the idea of being in a spaceship with a live dinosaur. You know, keep it unconscious. Besides, it, it's not a meat eater. Look, see? It's nibbling on water plants at the edge of the pool. Uh, is it worth the trouble? Worth the trouble? Look what we've got for two dodos, and, and they've only been extinct a few centuries. 
This thing is 140 million years old. It's worth its weight in uranium. All right, Skarno. You make Corey and the cadet carry the dinosaur. I'll wait here in the ship and take care of the dinosaur. What was that? Well, they scared away our baby dinosaur. I'm getting back to the ship. Commander, look. Coming out of the jungle. It's a monster. It's a Tyrannosaurus. It must be 50 feet high. It's looking around. Oh, look at the size of those teeth. I could gobble a man up in one bite. You two stand back. I'm running for the ship. Stand still. Merc, you idiot. Merc, use your ray gun. It may slow it down. Shoot! It's still coming. Ah! I'm stuck! Help me! We're falling into the tar pit. We can keep that tar pit between us and the dinosaur. Well, it can run three times as fast as we can. Commander. Commander, it's stuck. It's stuck in the tar. I hope it's deep enough to hold the dinosaur while we pull Merc out. Come on. Help me! Pull me out! Give me a hand, Merc. Half brace your feet, grab me around the waist. That's it. Now pull. We're getting him. Once more. Pull. That thing. We have to leave the ship before that thing gets loose. Skarno, he's blasting off. Skarno, don't leave me here. Don't leave me. He's gone. He left me here in a world full of monsters. We can't survive in a world like this. We're helpless. Well, right now, the safest place is right here by this tarp. There's our life insurance. Bob down for Huh? Every living thing is afraid of that monster. No other dinosaur is going to come close until this one sinks into the tar and disappears. Hours pass, and the steaming fern jungle is silent. In the tar pit, the huge dinosaur's struggles grow weaker. And the last 20 ton bulk sinks deeper into the black mire. Buzz, Happy, and Mert, prisoners in prehistoric time, remain close to the tar pit. Yes, sir. I'm getting hungry. I-, I wonder if we could find some fruit or something like that. Mm-hmm. I doubt it. We're in the Mesozoic period. Maybe all of the plants are still there. That's right. Fruit bearing trees won't emerge for millions of years yet. My stomach isn't going to wait. If Merck hadn't dropped his leg on the guitar pit, might be able to stun some small wizards. Wizards? I guess I'm not hungry after all. Come on, listen. Am I crazy, or is that a spaceship? A ship, all right. Scarno, I've been expecting him. Expecting him? Why? Why would he come back? I imagine he had some trouble getting out of the mess of the air. He tampered with a hyperspace computer. Yeah. I fixed it so it wouldn't go back into the star drive. Here he comes in for a landing. Oh, I'll bet he's praying his heart out that we're still alive. Now, come on. Let's see what kind of offer Starno will make us for a little advice on time travel. Wait right here. Stand right where you are. I've got you covered. Hail Scarno. We of the Mesozoic era salute you. Put up to that. Right, Corey, what did you do to the hyperspace computer? It's a little complicated, Scarno. I'd have to show you. And your price for that, I suppose, is a return to the 30th century. Plus your immediate surrender. Hand over your weapon. Not so fast, Corey. Given a little time, I could probably locate the trouble myself. I'll be perfectly safe inside the ship, and you'll be at the mercy of the dinosaurs. Hey, Commander. Another Tyrannosaurus. Yes. Probably searching for its mate there in the top end. You'd better accept my terms, Corey. What are they? Get the ship back to the 30th century, and I'll release you unharmed. You haven't much choice, Corey. All right. 
I'll get you back to the 30th century. With Merc guarding Buzz and Happy, Scarno blasts off from Earth. Then, out in space, Buzz corrects the hyperspace computer and plots a vector for a return to the 30th century. The ship cuts into star drive, and after anxious moments emerges into regular space. The others wait expectantly as Buzz makes an astrogation check. Checks out, Scarno. The positions of the stars and planets show we're back in the true present. By real star time, it's just nine hours since the blast off from Saturn. How can you tell so exactly by the positions of Saturn's moons? If you don't believe me, tune in a pair of time signal frequency on the space phone. I believe you. And now, Commander... And now you can release us. I suggest Mars. You can land near a settlement and blast off without being seen. And then you'd continue your attempt to capture me. No, Corey. I'm putting you both out into space right now. But, Scarno, you promised if we brought you back to the 30th century... Yeah, but that promise was made 140 million years ago. Merck, use your ray on them. We'll push them out into space, Captain. Merck, Merck, look out! Drop it, Merck! Oh, wait! Don't move, Corey. Come any closer and I'll shoot. Don't be a fool, Scarno. That's a blaster. It'll tear a hole in the ship. And if I hit you first, I'm warning you. All right, Corey. Give me that gun. That's a fool thing to do, Hap. Yes, sir? Keep Merck and Scarno covered. I'll see if that blast gun tore a hole in the ship. If there was a leak, we'd know it by now. In a weak charge. Uh-oh, here's what saved us. An instrument panel. Oh, it sure would have turned out of that. But it didn't wreck the control. No, the control section's okay. But it looks like we're not only the first human beings to see a live dinosaur, but also the last. What do you mean, sir? The hyperspace computer is wrecked, fused into a mass of junk. Well, we'll never know what made it able to travel through time. Well, I guess maybe it's just as well. From what I've seen of the past, I'm convinced there's no time like the present. Uh... An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Ah, that's my favorite verse, Commander, because I sure go for Nestle's great new coconut bar. (laughs) So I see, Hap. Are you practically gone through the entire month's supply already? Gee, Commander, I just can't help myself. When I bite into that luscious, thick, rich milk chocolate just loaded with crisp, toasted coconut, I sort of lose my head. i got to keep eating. I'll admit there never has been such a delicious chocolate bar as the new Nestle's coconut bar. Well, except maybe those other sensational Nestle's chocolate bars. You know, the, the rich milk chocolate, the almond bar, and wonderful crunch. Stop, now you're making me hungry. Well, what are we waiting for? Be my guest, Commander. Have a Nestle's chocolate bar. And that goes for you, too, fellas and girls. Remember... N-E-S-T-L-E-S. Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. Now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5, rushing toward the planet Saturn. Suddenly, another ship fires at them. Hey, that was close, Commander. He's getting his range with those torpedoes. They'll try evasive action. Why don't we give Gokov some of his own medicine? A few blasts with our space cannon and we, we can... can't shoot got to think about those people in Saturn City. If we destroy Drokov, we destroy the only person who can cure that epidemic. Look at rockets, we can't fight back. So all Drokov has to do is keep firing until he hits us. Be with us again next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Weed of Despair. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer, Commander Corey, and then Osborne is to that happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Tony Sides. Dick Tufel speaking. This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's Chocolate Bars. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed